that is that there are a lot of places online where you can ask them how to use how to mirror with your own devices like a Mac and a, and if you're not doing that then it's not relevant. But what what we were going to talk about is Roku these, these streaming devices and and making them work well. Can, can I have I, I have a question about uh, let's take Roku for instance. Uh, if uh, mirroring is if Roku if the mirroring process is going to work through Roku, is Roku uh, Bluetooth capable then? Is it picking up the signal from the computer? I mean, does it have a, uh, a is it Bluetooth or Wi-Fi or how I, is, how I is believe it? It's, uh, I believe it's going over Wi-Fi. I don't believe it's going Bluetooth, but I am not absolutely certain about the answer to that question. Chrissy? Yeah, I mean, the well, computer. Must, because if she's, if Deborah, Ann's, yeah, it must, because if she's getting access to using her Roku, but doesn't have a cable going into the living room, you see what I mean? So the so the TV is on cable and the and the Roku is plugged into the TV. So somehow it's connected that way, maybe. So you must so have a the, router. A router is what takes your signal from your internet. I can't hear you. The router is what takes your signal from your internet and talks to another room. Yeah. And get and talks so you don't have to have a cable. So it, it talks, it's your Wi-Fi, your router talks to your other device in another room. Oh, so okay, you think so my, my router in, in here is what's bringing me the Roku? Possibly. Oh, okay. It's, it's knowing to understand between the modem and the router. So maybe they're sometimes put together. I'm not sure about that. Maybe Harry knows, I don't know. It's magic, but, I just turned it on. What's up, Dave? Deborah Ann, some, someday, you, if you find yourself looking at your computer and you find yourself looking at a YouTube video, walk in the other room, leave it on, and walk in the other room, turn on your YouTube app on your Roku. Oh, yeah. And once you do that, there's going to be some interesting things start coming to you. Whether okay. you choose to do them or not, it's up to you. But they're both... Once you get them both talk, both operating in the same house, they want to do things, whether you want to do them or not, they want to do things that. Uh, so if I, if I turn on my, if I turn on YouTube here and then go turn on my TV and turn on the YouTube channel. Right. I now have an alien connection between these two things. Yeah, you'll, you'll get an offer uh, you, you'll see a, an option for entering a number in your computer to talk to make to to make it so you can start the video on your computer and go watch it in the other room. Should you want to do such a thing, I'm just but, saying that that's you know. Why, why wouldn't you just go and open a Roku and go right. to YouTube there? Yeah, yeah, of course, of yeah. course. I'm just saying dem to demonstrate this, this phenomenon. Uh huh. To demonstrate okay. the scientific phenomena, you can do it that way. <laughs> but Deborah Ann, you have an iPhone, correct? No, I oh. don't have an iPhone. Wait. I have an Android. Android. Okay, so you can share. Uh, how can she share that on your TV then, y'all? <laughs> share what? <laughs> she her, can, from her Android. She can mirror from her Android phone to her to her um, TV through through her Roku? I don't know. I don't know. Probably. Oh, why would I want to? Well, because <laughs> you might get a picture that you can't see as well on your phone. I guess you could look at it on your computer. Do the pictures on your phone go to your computer too, Deborah Ann, or not? Um, I can download them. It's not real easy, but I can download them. But if you wanted to see one of your pictures larger, could she go for It'd be her like phone? if somebody sent me a picture and I wanted to see it larger, yeah. I could. Yeah, it's, it's always been kind of convoluted. But yeah, I can download it to my computer. Uh -huh. Well, there might be a way to do it to your TV screen too. But, you know, I don't understand. Someone explained to me how Roku works because, and, and I, you know, I know that, you know, in, in the handout that Harry sent out about streaming, 
I just wanted to comment that he, um, he had a website that compares the different streaming devices like Amazon Fire and Roku and everything else. And if, if you go to that best reviews from, um, it, first it looks like the page can't be found, but if you just type in streaming devices, it talks about the pros and cons of all of these different streaming devices. Hmm. And then it goes into key considerations, you know, what, what do you want to stream? What kind of box do you have, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then it talks about accessories and head, you know, apparently there's a way that you can, uh, there's, a, there's, a, a, there's a universal remote that you can buy that I don't know why you'd want to, it costs 200 bucks, but um, that you can put all of your different devices on one, one remote and, and do all sorts of things with it. So that's a pretty interesting review and, and might be helpful to some people. Is it true that if you have a, a membership in PBS that you automatically have Roku free? They've been advertising they that. You can download an app, but I think you still need a device. Yeah. You still have to have the little remote from to be able to use it. I don't know. I you, thought Roku all you have to do, all the Roku owner has to do is, is uh, I, I tried to look up that special, that, that promotion. I couldn't find it. So if, if anybody can chime in on that promotion. I don't have anything to add about that. But I do know that uh, if you've got a Passport account, you simply make sure the app is, is running on your Roku and, uh, and just simply enter your password and yeah. log in and you're good to go. And then yeah. you get a million other... Uh, channels to choose from too a lot of them are free okay now uh there are a lot of other things that you can install and and on your uh on your roku home page and they're also uninstall if you do not use them and i recommend the latter strenuously get the stuff off there that you're not going to use you'll always you always have access to it in other words, declutter that home screen so it's got Netflix, PBS, and your canopy, and three or four other things that you actually use so that you're not fighting and fumbling through a menu to, to enjoy uh, uh, something you want to watch. Um, I forgot where I was going with this, but anyway, PBS is just, I can't endorse it strongly enough, especially if they have a promotion. It gets you anywhere close to a, a, a Roku, even if you use it once a month. The Roku is a, it's a real changer for me, game changer. Mm -hmm. Well, if I see Roku come up along the bottom of my TV, does that mean I have it? Yeah, that's the built-in version. It's a little trickier to work. I mm -hmm. I have had trouble navigating it on okay. my brother's TV. We uh, and clearing the programs. It, it's it takes a little more patience. As does a fire stick. I can't, I, I gotta ask the group about your experience with the fire stick. On my system, the fire stick is the slowest thing I've seen since Windows 98. I mean, I, I can't believe how long it takes to load a channel, to change a, a, a screen. I often end up double clicking something unintentionally and I go two steps at one time now tell me that's just my system and you don't have any trouble on your system. That's just your system. Okay, it's interesting. Merely, you don't have trouble with Fire Stick, do you? I would say when I first bring up Netflix, let's say, it might take a few minutes to come up, but once it's up, it's it's it, yeah. it doesn't, it's not slow. Yeah, once I start the movie, I'm good to go. Yeah. I'm okay. not even just starting the movie, but once once the choices come up and I actually get the pictures, I'm fine, you know, but it, it does have a, a tendency to be a little slow loading in at the very beginning, I'd say. Yeah. But then yeah. I'm all, I always load out of it back to my TV and then I load back into it. If I left it on, it might come up right away. Oh, well. But, you know, I still don't get the difference. When you get Roku, um, like Deborah, and when you got your Roku, what came with it? A little box, a cable, and a little uh, channel changer thing. Oh. But then, did, did, did have did it have then that allowed you to access what? It it allows me to access 
you know, uh, well, I get the, I, it has the PBS passport on it. It has the Roku network. It has Netflix. It has all of those. You still have to pay for those if you want to use them. But then it has, I don't know, Peacock. It's got all sorts of these other networks. Some are free, some are not. Okay. And, and you can, it has BBC. It has all sorts of stuff on it. And you can just go to them and you'll find out whether you have to pay for them or they won't let you in. But it's like it's it's the master box yeah. okay. for all of these things. And yeah, you know, it's just it's a page. box about the size of I don't know, you know, a little little package like this. And you, you just plug it in the back and set it on the in front of your TV. And uh, yeah, well, that's that's and, exactly and what my free. Apple TV is. It's just a little box. It came yeah. with a remote, and you plug it into the back of your oh, TV. Oh, yeah. Same kind of box. Whereas a, whereas with a Fire Stick doesn't have any box. You just plug something in the back of the TV, and you have a remote. But there's no box. Okay. Well, yeah. it's the same it's thing. It's just a yeah. remote stick. The box yeah, is. Small. I was I I was thinking I wanted a you know I wanted a TV that did more than I've got I've got cable, but there's like nothing on half of the time and um and even pbs sometimes it doesn't have anything i want to watch and i was getting very frustrated so i thought well i'll get a t smart tv and that turned into a fiasco because i have a cabinet and you can't buy a tv that fits in it very well mm -hmm. so because it's older and so um i bought a smart tv and I got it all set up and it wouldn't load. And it was just one thing after another. I spent half my life on tech support. I finally put it all back in the box and took it back to Costco and thought, and it didn't come with Roku in it after all that. And so I thought, oh, this isn't the answer. So I got my old TV out and I went down to Buy Mart and I spent 50 bucks and I bought a Roku and plugged it in and it answered all my dreams. It has a zillion TV stations on it. Yeah, great, great. And okay. you don't need a master's degree in engineering to use it. Right. So, and, and, and that's really what, that's what you'll learn if you look at that, uh, the best streaming devices. It talks about, you know, pros and cons. Now, you know, I had a similar experience. I have a smart TV, but I wanted to use Canopy and PBS on it. And when I tried to install them, they said that it was it was too old to do that. So I got the smart stick for thirty nine ninety nine, and then I was able to download Canopy in the PBS app. And what happened with mine is I didn't remember my passport number or any of that, but I just stepped up to the television with my phone in my hand, and it just automatically it's sort of like the coming to the, the coming to, to religion experience that, that that Harry had. All of a sudden, my my passwords just transferred. It was lucky because I didn't remember what they were. I mean, I knew I could find them if I had to, but I didn't have to. Didn't you so, have? Did you have to have PBS open on your phone at the time, or? I don't even remember. No. I just remember well, I stepped up and boom, it happened. I find this right, happens frequently scary. with Macintosh. Yeah. yeah. No, it, it is interesting how they start talking to each other. I, I think once you realize that, it is kind of strange. But the problem is, since you don't know how it's working, it's hard to make it happen when you want it to. Yeah. You can't make them talk when you want them to talk if you don't know how. I want to know what they do at night when I'm yeah, not I watching. Do that too. <laughs> That's great. The, the spawn of a thousand New Yorker cartoons right there. <laughs> Now, I want to know something from Ed. He said that, Ed, I, I remember you saying that you were, you were doing some more research on Roku and you were thinking of upgrading it. And what was it that was appealing to you about the newer kinds? I mean, they're changing all the time. Yeah, Just, well, yeah. I, I, I guess what, uh, mine's an old one. I mean, we've had it for several years. I can't even remember, I don't even remember what model it is. Yeah. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure if I have the paperwork on it anymore. I, I seem to have stuck it somewhere and can't find it. Anyway, uh, I am just thinking that, you know, with the technology constantly being upgraded, that a newer version, you know, might provide me with some more options, you know? So that's the reason I was considering getting it, you know, upgrading. So that, that's- a wide range of costs of Roku's. I mean, you can get really inexpensive yeah. ones or you can get really expensive ones. Yeah, this, uh, I was kind of looking at the ultra 
Although you can, if you get the stream bar thing, and Harry, I think, sent me a, uh, a link to the stream bar at a separate email after our last session, <clears throat> those, uh, th that way you can, you can also enhance your audio, the audio part, you know, your reception actually hearing it. Uh, but that's an extra cost. Mm -hmm. But the, uh, the Roku Ultra, yeah, there you go. Uh, the Roku Ultra is what I was looking at, and it was about a hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. And if you go with the stream bar, you what can see it's 170. Mean? What does 4K mean? That's a resolution, I think, isn't it, Harry? Yeah, that's if you've got a 4K TV, it's it's ready to go. It's not gonna it's not gonna show 4K on a TV that won't do it. But but again, it's like it's like high res music. After a point, you know, when it gets beyond the range of human hearing, the advantages are, um, how shall we say? What's a good term? Who's got the best vocabulary? The specious at best, uh, I guess is the word. <laughs> we like specious. And they, they say that about 4K. They say you can't see at that resolution, but they're making all the TVs 4K, whether you like it or not. So you're going to buy one, you know. But I noticed, yeah. I mean, the, the, the thing that I was reading about Fire Sticks assumed I had a Fire Stick 4K, and I looked all over this box. I see no 4K, so probably I don't. That's probably the most recent well, thing. And it's so sad because now you won't be able to see those commercials in the clarity that you need to buy the product. It's just a well, failure. It's an absolute. Does yours, Mary Lou, uh, uh, does yours have the headphone jack on it? Which is the cheapest one that has that? headphone jack on the side of the remote. I think that is the coolest thing. And I don't use really? mine nearly enough. It's well, a very you know, good little headphone amp. Yeah, you know what, the, this older Roku that I've got, I, you know, after last, the last time, I think I mentioned that my remote, I didn't think it had the, uh, the headphone jack. Well, I looked at it again after our last meeting and it does have the headphone jack in it. So I know I haven't tried that yet, but basically that way uh, you can watch TV without you know, waking up the whole household, you know, you can it solves a major problem that you have to buy extra crap for and you don't have to buy it once you bought that Roku. Yeah, actually, that's one of the things that they review on. Uh, if you go to that, that the Best Buys, you know, when they're talking about essential or accessories or, you know, um, private listening, Roku was the first to market with a feature that everyone else quickly copied, private listening. With private listening, you can plug a set of headphones into your streaming device's remote control and hear the audio from your TV while your TV's built-in audio goes quiet. So the TV goes off and you're the only one who can hear what's on the TV. So, you know, I don't who- I well, don't One know. other point that I wanted to make was that after we were on the last time I was trying to do streaming and I said to Mary Lou, there's something wrong with the Apple remote, which we got like four or five years ago. I said, it's dead. And she said, well, change the batteries. I said, there's no place to do that. And she finally figured out that you just charge it like a phone. I never oh. knew that. Yeah. Oh, oh, it has a USB outlet in the end. Yeah. Oh, it does. Oh. Um, is the Roku well, yeah. remote take like a Apple iPod speaker? I mean, what kind of outlet is it? Input. It's a USB port. It's a USB port. I just plugged it in like it was my phone and it charged it. No, the Roku remote control for the speakers. What kind of speakers? I could look it up. Yeah, the, I don't know. The Roku. Oh, that I was just reading about? Yeah. Oh, the stream bar? Well, no, for the, for the headphones. Sorry. I couldn't it doesn't it say in this thing. It, 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 it just says that... Um, yeah, I don't know if the Express has it or not. It, it just says that it just says a set of headphones. It doesn't say what kind. Gotcha. Yeah. I don't probably know got a, it's, it's probably got a standard jack well, in it. Does, I mean, your, does, your Roku, plug, yeah. does your does your Roku uh, Ed does your Roku uh, um, device your Roku uh, remote have a jack in it? Yeah. Well, no. Yeah. I mean, it's got a jack. It's got the inlet. You know the, the place so where you can put. He's asking about that. It's in the it's in the Roku. Yeah, it's uh, in the side. I'm like, gonna go. For, I'm gonna run up and run upstairs and get my Roku, and I'll be right back. Okay, that's so great. What I was trying to figure out: Can you use your own head 
earbuds or do you have to buy yeah, something? Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Right. it's surprisingly powerful too. I had I have a set of headphones that's quite high impedance. It's hard to drive and uh, it actually drives them just fine. And I was very surprised at that because usually you need a larger headphone amp for that. But yeah, it's a standard headphone jack. But Betty Ann, you brought up another important issue and that is that when we were trying to help you figure out why you, you know, whether you could turn on Netflix and that kind of thing, we realized that you were using the wrong remote. Right. So I was using the TV remote and I found out you can't do that. And see, that's what I didn't know. So you once your to... TV's on with your TV remote, then I have to switch. I have to go to HDMI and then I have to switch. There it is. Got the symbol on it too. Okay, so an Apple earbuds won't work, but this is this is the front of the Ro of the Roku. Uh -huh. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's the same one. Does, it come, well, does it come with all of those? Does it come with all of those things it has buttons for for free? Uh, well, no. You've got to subscribe, like to Netflix. Okay. <laughs> you have to subscribe to that, and I haven't some of these others like Hulu. Yeah, I think we do. Some, we just recently subscribed to Hulu. I did too. Yeah, they're and, and also Amazon Prime. But you know something? I, I don't use these buttons to go to them. I probably should. Instead, I do it through the... Uh, sometimes you know, through they the work, sometimes they don't. Yeah, I don't know oh. what the A and the B stand for. I'm not quite sure what that is. Oh, yeah. Oh. Can, I, can I jump in here and Please. say something? Yes. Yeah, uh, two. Rex. I have a smart TV that I, I just bought... <clears throat> Well, about a month or so ago, it's a Samsung, and all the things you're talking about, I can get on my smart TV. I got mm -hmm. Hulu on there, I have Netflix on there, I've got HBO Max on there. And uh, is it free? Did it come with it? Or do you well, have to subscribe? I subscribe to Netflix, and then HBO Max, I think uh, I got on another special deal. And, and in terms of headphones, I I've got a pair of headphones over at Best Buy. I paired it with the TV, and so I can use my headphones anytime I want. I don't even, uh, you know, I don't have a Roku, but I can. So what do you plug your headphones into? The Bluetooth. Yeah, it's why well, it connects by Bluetooth. Oh, okay. <clears throat> and I have a charger, so I can plug it in and recharge it. Great. And, uh, and the headphones, it tells me. Uh, uh, you know, it tells me uh, uh, I, if it's a, a full charge or a 70% charge or a 50% charge. Great. And then if it gets down too low, it says your headphone is, is low, but I can still listen to it for a while. Uh -huh. And I go plug it in. Rex do, you, Rex, do you mind if I ask how much those headphones cost? Oh, the headphones were just over $100. Yeah, okay. And the smart TV was a couple hundred, I bet. Oh, no, the smart TV was a bit more than that. Okay, okay. But there's it was, a it's a 65-inch TV. Okay, now. well, that's a big one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and so it's a, yeah. a Samsung QLED. You can get smaller ones. Uh-huh. But uh, and yeah, then it's a, it's a Wi-Fi. Yeah, well, that's good. That's great. May I ask a very simple question? <laughs> there are many programs that I would like to hear, and especially the seasons, I'd like to tune into theirs. And they tell you how much they cost, but they don't tell you how to get your money to them. What is the process? Well, we've done that before. Del Delma, remember when we I paid with my credit card and you paid me with a check because you didn't want to use your credit card, but it's a credit card process. But but how, what is the process? Where do you send it? Do you send it to the seasons? What is the process for getting the money to them? You, you go on and buy the ticket and then you put your credit card number in on the screen. On their website. On their website. Okay. Yeah. And it, if once there, you don't have to keep putting it each time you shouldn't if you yeah, they, save it you can you can save your credit card to most sites i don't usually do that but you can mm -hmm. yeah my my um confused and the money comes on the screen and they never tell you how to get it to them or what the, <laughs> what the process is yeah yeah my to my uh phone iphone seems to know which credit cards i use and it says do you want to use this one mm -hmm. So I don't have to go find my credit card anymore. Yeah. 
<laughs> That's scary, isn't it? That's yeah. scary. Yeah. Apple, yeah. Apple will remember your cards on your uh, on your Apple device. That's that's correct. Yeah. It's uh, and it's thankfully it's well encrypted. But uh, let's let's be let's be careful about that. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Well, have yeah. you paid each other through your Apple or like Venmo or any of that yet? Anybody? Have what? I missed have that. You, have you paid anybody else? like through your Apple account or through Apple or Venmo, there's other ways you can, like I just sent my, I can go into my Venmo app and sent my friend who we're gonna share a house in Oregon on vacation. I just sent her my half or you can do it through your Apple. Like if I go into my contact list, we just, dad wanted to give my, his granddaughter some money. They were in California and I just, clicked the money right to her i use you don't need to check after you know he went because we didn't want to mail her a check you see yeah i That's i send really my weird. grandson's birthday money through zell z-e-l-l-e wow i guess i'm really old-fashioned i use something that they used to call paypal yeah <laughs> well, paypal too yeah that is that no longer the cool uh, one to use? Oh, well, I, I use PayPal oh, sometimes. You're an object of a lot of scams, Harry. <laughs> oh, well, okay. I guess I'm wide open to losing my money. I use my hey, online right bank. This point, right at this point, I could tell you how I got rid of my friend from India. It's a good oh. 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 day. Nell did. Nell took the phone and said, she doesn't live here anymore. I'm the master of the house. What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's, That's great. excellent. That's a good way to Leo. Right around. But Deborah Ann, I also pay through my bank. Pay. I. That's the I, only way I pay. Yeah. yeah. I use I use my online bank to pay all my bills, mm -hmm. and I can pay anybody else I want that way. Okay. okay. Perfect. And what's your bank? Is it Chase? Bing. Yeah. See, Chase is where I can do the zelling too. It's um, being scammed right now. <laughs> oh, that's right. They do have that zell, but I don't. I don't. I never signed up for that one. I can just do it right through the bank. I just did it because my daughter told me that's how they send money to their kids in college, and so I thought it was worth a try and worked. Mm -hmm. Worked. Is, is it, it any different than directly using your bank? I'm not sure how to use my bank. I don't know how I would use my bank to pay like my niece automatically. I, I don't there, know. There's a place oh, where dear. you can transfer or send money. And the, the system that the Chase uses is called Zelle, Z-E-L-L-E. -L -L -E. So you say you want to Zell somebody, then you ha they have to have an account. You have to know what their phone number or you have to know whether they signed up with a phone number or an email address. See. And then it just, and they'd already done it. All the kids had already done it because their parents had sent them money that way. But then it doesn't go directly into their bank account? Yes, yeah. within minutes. That's it, the it, difference. It, oh, it, that's the difference. Yeah, okay. yeah. See, the bank, I don't, yeah, that's what we're saying. It's automatically, like. Okay. That that's, that's that's <laughs> yeah. 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 It's Surprise, said, there's so sure many different right, ways. Are you sure this is the right number? Because it's going to go to this person whether you want to or not. Yeah, that's the scary part. Yeah. So I always text them afterwards and say, I just sent it. Let me know if you got it. So yeah. they do. <laughs> so is Zelle a third party app of some sort? It's not an app. It's, uh, or maybe, I mean, I don't have it. And do you Zelle think it's app. through that bank only? It's through, it's through, through banks. I mean, they, they, use Wells Fargo and Wells oh, Fargo, okay. a lot of big banks use Zelle. Okay, I'll look at that it's too, but there's Venmo. No bank in America, but I've never used yeah, it. Credit Union doesn't use it, but but I have a Chase account. So I, I transfer money from my bank account into the Chase account and then I Zelle it to them. Through. Interesting. I wonder if it's international. It might be, it might be. Mm -hmm. I think it probably is. Because the only way I can send money to my daughter is that I send it to her father who puts it in her international account. Oh, Which is okay, but it's really, you know, yeah. slow way. Yeah. Don't well, you want to send any scary. money to your friend in India? <laughs> <laughs> send it to your friend in India. They'll take care of it, right? Be careful. <laughs> it's not on you the know, volume. I had a question today where the, what was it? 
Um, my Zoom wanted to know if they could always use my Gmail account or something like that. And mm -hmm. I said, yes. And I don't know if I should have. No, I don't know what that is. I don't know what it was. I shouldn't have said yes. Why? I think, so, you, well, what other account would they use? I don't know. I was confused by the question. So I said, sure. <laughs> I would soon need your Gmail account. Oh, because that's how she gets the, on. The invitation. Yeah, because that, that's oh, how okay. we get on. <laughs> Yeah. You know, according to the yeah. Zelle website, it says, send and receive money with Zelle. Zelle is a fast and free way to send and receive money with the people you know and trust. Yeah. You can find Zelle on the banking app of hundreds of banks and credit unions nationwide. Oh. Send money straight from your banking app for all sorts of things, even if your recipient has a different U.S.-based bank or credit union. Well, if it's sanctioned by my bank, then it's uh, it's got an air of legitimacy right off the top. So I'm happy. But it is it said it says U.S. right? Yeah. It just says in the U.S. It's not international. It's even, yeah, even if you, yeah, it says U.S. based. Uh, oh, too bad. Then send, send money. Out what her U.S. bank is because it's a U.S. I think it's a U.S. bank that 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 she uses. She has an American credit card. Oh. It's the account that her father set up when she went to college, and that's how they gave her money. Yeah, well, I can I can say that it, Zella's worked really well for, for okay. me. I'm going to have to talk to Les about it and see. Yeah, I bet and you it work. Venmo is part of PayPal, actually, now that I'm looking it up. You know, one disadvantage of PayPal is there is a fee. But Venmo, really? there isn't. Where, where PayPal is there is. There's well, a, is there a per transaction fee? Yes. It, when, when we get deposits at our Quaker meeting from PayPal, there's a per transaction plus a percentage of the amount that you're receiving. Well, I've never I've never paid a fee to, to PayPal that, that I know of. I can't but, remember paying to oh, PayPal. You don't see the fee, but the receiver might. I've received money and never paid a fee. And I've sent money and, and never been aware of a fee. Well, some a lot of our shows you know that's right. yeah. It's if you, you pay through it, never mind. Yeah. You can be you can be sure that that they're getting their money somewhere. Yeah, yeah there was a cost. Process. When I paid somebody, there was a cost. That's right. I remember. I, I rarely do it. Yeah. On These here, on here it says if you pay with a credit card, you have a three percent fee for each transaction. Uh -huh. But if you pay with a debit or bank account, you don't. Okay, okay, that's why I haven't paid a fee because okay. it goes from my bank account. Oh, maybe that's right. People are paying with credit cards. Yeah. Does the recipient have to be on Zelle as well? Um, they, they somehow they, they, they yeah. yes, their account has to be registered with, with Zelle and they can do that through their bank. I mean, I've never received any money from Zelle, but all the kids they can you they could use either their phone number when they registered for it they could either use their phone number or their email and then they gave their account information so i don't have their bank account information i just have their zelle number which is you know, or yeah you, you, you there's something wrong with that uh, <laughs> they're they're getting all you're not getting any of the money and they're getting all of it. You need to there, there, that. there's something wrong with this picture yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I get other benefits, I have to admit. Oh, okay. I opened they a small savings. savings. <laughs> are you I getting money from your small... kids? If so you can clue me in yeah. how to get it. <laughs> what? No, I didn't I hear what Del was saying. Savings account at US Bank. And in the meantime, my investment broker found out how much money I had in my account. And he invested it. So I had a very little in it. And they pestered me every month to put more money into that account. <laughs> because they can charge you a fee in your savings account if you don't have a minimum. <laughs> Unless you change and get a different kind of an account. Money. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> but Apple users, um, you can use Apple Pay. So look up Apple Pay if you're an Apple user. I I can see I'm not using that enough. I need to use that more. I you know when you see people Apple just put their phone up, you know, you're at Starbucks and you see them put their phone up. And oh, you're yeah. like, what? How are they paying with their phone? Well, that's what they're doing. 
but you can paint like they i said that, like they have that little uh what do they call it the uh the, the little uh scan code yeah the little round thing that uh yeah the yeah the code that code the qr code or something like that oh yeah but in the in apple wallet it, there's automatically something in there called apple pay and i've never known how to set that up i guess i used to they make it they, they, they make it very easy for you to set it up betty, betty ann yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they want you to use it yeah, yeah no, they i just looked at it. it now send money to the whole family learn more about apple cash so <laughs> Yeah. I'm gonna start sending money to myself, you guys. I don't get money. Oh, there you oh. go. Oh, you can start my, sending money to me, Mary Lou. Oh, okay. No, I'm just to know. You can send some money to me if you want to try it out. Yeah, yeah just to practice. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I have a call coming in at four o'clock. So okay. Is your phone working, Delma? Pardon me. Is your phone working now? Yes. That's Good. the strangest thing. I called people and they took that took the call, but there wasn't any voice. My voice disappeared, it didn't come through. That's the first time that's ever happened to me. There's a it mute button on At the auto okay. shop. Watch out for the mute button. Look for the what? Watch mute? out for the mute button. It can easily be touched on those old type phones. Oh, really? And now, on but, a new phone for that matter. But, are, but did, is your phone working again for you now, Delma? It's working fine. My voice came back, apparently, because I made several calls for they got the phone. They took the phone up. There was no voice. And I said things, you know, I said something to them, but it didn't come through. Yeah. Show, the, show the phone to the that camera. To me before. <laughs> I called her and it worked. Did Becky come over too? Now. Good. Okay, now. Good. You probably got a mute oh. button on there that you accidentally hit. Easy to do. Easy to do. Well, Harry, do you want? Does anybody want to hear something about uh, about sound systems? Yes. I'm really interested in talking. So, like the farthest thing from this, we certainly found our new topic of the day, didn't we? And it's not we're off script, but on topic. I'll tell you what. Yeah, banking, internet banking. My oh my, that's a quagmire. We better have a part two follow up on that one. You know, I have a lot of friends that don't think it's safe, and I think they're crazy. I think it's very safe. I, I, I it's safer safe. than putting the check in the mailbox. Definitely, especially in Pasadena, where somebody puts sticky stuff along the edge when you mail a letter, and it doesn't go down in, and then they can oh. reach it and pull it out. Yeah. And I complained to the post office, and they said, we know. <laughs> the reason... The reason I use snail mail to pay my bills is it helps me kind of keep track. Uh, if I when I did it with banking with with uh, internet banking, uh, some uh, I, I don't know I could remember the transaction better if I actually wrote the check. I know what you mean, That's but what I do is I print it out. I print out every single check that I've paid, and then I write it in my checkbook. Oh, I okay. keep a balance running balance in my checkbook, but I have the print out. And then when you go on the online banking, it always tells you when you last paid. Right. Yeah, I do it just like when I wrote checks and I thought I would miss that ritual of writing checks and putting them in the envelopes and putting the stamp on it. And that lasted about one, one check paying session. And I went, man, that just took two seconds to do. But I, when I pay the bill on in my bank, I first off, I write all the transactions in my checkbook. Yeah. Then I go to the, then I go to my computer and I go to the banking app and I sit there with the checkbook ledger and enter it all in. And then when you get your bank statement, it, you know, you check it off like it was a check. Yeah, yeah I do that. I confess, I got to confess that I am finally and only recently. I don't see myself in this one to be, uh, I've only recently learned uh, and and become accustomed to doing remote deposits. Now, you, everybody's been They're doing fantastic. it for years. Oh, everybody's yeah. been doing it for years. Oh, but I everybody. don't do that. Tell me how to do that. It's great. It's so easy. I only did it because I was afraid to go to the bank. Yeah. <laughs> and exactly how do you do that? You. I don't do it. How do you, do you, got your, you got your app on your phone. Mine, mine's the Celerity app. And inside the app, it, sa it, it, it says uh, mobile deposit. And then it opens your camera. 
you hold a hold your camera, hold your phone over your check, take a picture mm -hmm. of the front, take a picture of the endorsed back, mm -hmm. and boom. And, and tell and, which account you want to go into, and it's amazing. Yeah, it's great. It's yeah. easy. But then well, you have to remember you deposited the check. <laughs> so then I put a little sticky on the check saying this was deposited on this date, because it looks like you forgot to deposit it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You still have the checks. That would be yeah. weird. You still have the check. It's so I weird. still have my I still have my my check from from President Trump and the letter that came with it. I'm going to sell that for some uh, some <laughs> collectible value of wow. <laughs> it'll be zero, I think. It'll, but uh, but you know that is absolutely I, the neatest thing. Now we only need to go to the bank for cash, mm -hmm. and we mm -hmm. don't need that very often either. And well, machine, you can get that at the grocery up. store or anywhere, you know. Yeah. 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 Well, Mary Lou, to to respond to your to your uh, uh, trying to yeah. steer us, yeah. Did did anybody uh, does anybody want any further expansion on the audio streaming or the speakers and systems, which is down at the bottom? That's a functional. You can, you want that regardless of whether you stream a darn thing or not. Uh, you know, the questions do people that, have that about? You're talking little tail, about the tail end of the document there. Oh yeah. You see this? Yeah, way down at the bottom. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you're if you are not happy with the sound of your system, I don't care what it is, your computer, your TV, you're not you don't have to buy a sound bar. You can buy an actual hi-fi. But most folks already have a hi-fi, so you're probably already using it. But don't tolerate bad sound, especially these days it's so cheap to get something that sounds absolutely wonderful. So what what's cheap? Well, cheap is what I've got right here on my desktop, a little Parts Express. It's called a Kinter. And several people make this little amp. It's got a travel and bass. Can you show it? It's a little bigger than the size of a couple cigarette boxes, cigarette packs. And the speakers are Dayton Audio. Both all this available out of Parts Express. Spell the name of that again, Harry. Parts Express. No, the uh, the the name you. The brands. Yeah. Yeah, Dayton Audio, D A Y T O N, just like Dayton Dayton Washington or Dayton Ohio. And the Kinter, I guess it's a. I don't even know if you can find the Kinter anymore. I think I ended up getting that at Amazon, but they have small amps out there. Whatever, whatever Guttenberg has in his video, likely still available. But just go to Parts Express and enter small amps, and you get you get right away. You get into uh, you know a, a little you, upgrade. You, is your speaker hooked to your computer with a cord, or is it like a Wi-Fi? I'm corded from my uh, my path. My my path is this, is is this, and this is what I recommend. Comes out a USB from the computer, goes into a DAC digital analog converter out of the DAC into the amp from the amp to the speakers wired all the way. I don't use Bluetooth unless I have to because you take a little quality hit and, oh. it's, and if it's cheaper to get a higher quality system that's what I prefer if it's especially when it's cheaper to get a better quality system. Is your TV set hooked into the same speaker system? TV in the other room I use uh, I, I pipe it into my stereo on the shelf below and uh, only recently I've solved several problems by running all my HDMI into the hi-fi amp. Modern hi-fi amps all have a video HDMI inputs. That solves several problems. The, the main problem with my, uh, my back, to, back to our streaming sticks, my Amazon stick would not produce a sound through my hi-fi, even though it was connected in a roundabouts, it was connected. It wasn't connected primarily. So I took that Amazon stick, plugged it into the HDMI on the back of the amp. And the amp now is, of course, it comes, the sound comes directly off the stick into the amp. So I've no, there's no question I'm getting the, the hi-fi amp. But it was only playing through the TV speakers. If you're hearing sound through your TV speakers, don't put up with it. You don't have to. Get a get a hi-fi and you can get you can get a system for geez under a hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. Really okay. no, no sense in 
But, and, and you're saying that if we, uh, the, the last thing on your handout is this guy, inexpensive speakers and systems, the audio philiac, Steve Gutenberg, is that what you're saying? Right. He'll but refer you to, to I several don't even know specific. What I'm asking for if I go there. We're just asking for, for, um, well, like at Parts Express, you can browse their browse their hi-fi, browse their stereos. They're the ones that are, that's the new Radio Shack. I don't know if you all remember Radio Shack. Well, they went away. Well, they, the, the, the one that's, that's kind of stepped in for me, I always used to rely on Radio Shack parts and stuff, but they went away and now it's Parts Express. Now, I tell you, I've had a lot of bad luck with them on some amps that are, are garbage and after they got them all back from everybody who bought them, they don't carry them anymore. So, but I am not going to cut them off just because they happen to make a bad purchase from China. Uh, it's not my fault, but so we're I'm not, not, we're they're the only game in town. But I'd like to consult on your individual needs if if uh, if that's possible on on these hi-fi things. But uh, gosh, there's some real shortcuts to get some great sound. So uh, where would you go, say, here in town to get a, a, a good, reasonably priced amp speaker, you know? Amp and speakers? Well, I... I, I or a hi-fi hi system, hi-fi system. I wouldn't do it, but they, they I'm sure they got them at, at Best Buy. I'm sure you can get something decent at, at Best Buy. It's You're kind of limited to what they carry, and uh, uh, you got a little wider set of choices at... You know, I do end up, you know, end up buying odds and ends at, uh, to, to finish matching a system. I'll go to Amazon or Parts Express. And uh, there's just a, a whole lot more options. But, uh, you know, there really and, isn't a local place anymore, like a local guy. I mean, the yeah, record store I, used to. Uh, you know, yeah. Best Buy is about the only one I know of right off the top. I, they may have a few things in the uh, uh What's the name of that uh, computer co printer shop next door to Best Buy? Office Depot. Office Depot. They may have some things at Office Depot. And what happened? And then what happened to um, Neil Young? Put out. What was that called? I'll look it up. The Pono. Yeah, the Pono. Yeah, he had a player a few years ago. It was a he had a a music player a, a, that uh, kind of. I don't know if it fell flat or not, but it was a real temptation for me because it was coming preloaded with uh, like Patti Smith's whole collection or, or at least one of her albums anyway. Yeah. And uh, you could get a custom one, but uh, that's another way to go. That's It's called a DAP, D Digital Audio Player. Um, that's another way to go if you're, if you're traveling a lot and you want to have some some music. But we our DAPs are our, our cell phones. Oh, yeah. Maybe. Hmm. yeah. Well, so, but what do you think, Ed? Do you think your son-in-law would know about what about the kind of uh, speaker systems that they carry at Best Buy, or that was that not his thing? Well, no, he. I, I think he probably might have some ideas about that. You know, he's, it's been a while since he's, he's been out of Best Buy now for several years, but uh, yeah. uh, he might does. Have. He does know. I know he's got his house. <laughs> He's got speakers all over his house, you know. So I know that I know he knows probably some of what Harry is talking about here. Uh -huh. uh, I'll have to ask him. Yeah, ask him if he has any ideas of sort of beginning steps for people who aren't sure whether they they don't know what they're missing, right? That's my problem. I don't know I what I'm put, missing. I'll put together what I'm using here in this in the in the and what I've bought for other people in the in the. Uh, okay. Well, what we're missing is that we've kicked ourselves because we threw, we got rid of our records. Well, yeah. that, that yeah. was an error. That was a mistake. I realize they're awkward and, and they require a certain amount of care, but. Um, <laughs> my son, uh, my son is kind of into mid-century stuff and he's gotten, he's bought, picked up a couple of hi-fi systems from back in the seventies. And these are, I, I remember them from, you know, when, when they were current back when I was younger, you know, and he's got a couple of uh, uh, Ken Moore's. Uh, Kenwood's. Kenwood. Ken, Ken, Kenwood's, yeah. And he frequently has a video on old systems. You, you'll love his channel. Who's that? 
Steve Guttenberg, he'll frequently oh, have, oh, okay. you know, he'll yeah. talk about old stuff anytime, anytime he feels like it. And, and there's, there's lots of, uh, lots of channels out there that appreciate, uh, the old vinyl spinners and the old gear. It's a, yeah, it, yeah. it's a, it's a cult. Yeah. But there's yeah, a cult for a reason. It's a got, it, it, it sounds better and it's digital ready, whether yeah. it was, and it doesn't matter if it's 20 or 30 or 40 years before the digital age, you could still pipe a digital signal to it. Right, right. The new, the new device that most people don't know about is the DAC, the digital analog converter. That's the new, the preamp of the new age. The digital analog computer? It com it converter. Converter. It, 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 it's a, that's, the, that's the component that people are, are mystified by, but it, it, it generates every device that he, where you hear a speaker, your computer or whatever it is, has a has a DAC built into it. It's there's a there's a little di digital analog converter it converts the digital signal to an analog signal. Well, when you go outboard, this is the only tip that I want to share on this whole topic, really, honestly, because I can customize small systems till the uh, we're blue in the face. The point the point is you want to get get the DAC out of the noise bucket called a computer and in and external so you hook it to your usb and and you pay a hundred bucks for one or 60 or 70 or five thousand or whatever you want to pay and then you've got an external converter that's out of the noise generating systems inside your computer suddenly you've got a major advantage and your signal is ready for your amp and speakers yes you can plug it into the headphone out yes you can hear sound Yes, it's a simpler way. Mary Lou uses it. She's using one today. Her cord, she's used it so much her cord is failing. You know, that's excellent. That shows how useful it is. It's very useful to plug right into that headphone jack. Every computer, every laptop, every desktop has a headphone jack. Use it. But the next step up is go USB to a DAC, then your choice of amplifiers. Take the one out of the garage, bring it in. Start using it, plug some speakers into it. If you get both channels, you don't have to buy a darn thing. <laughs> I so honestly, I went down and, and we went to a, 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 a barn at my friend's house in Oregon and we pulled out stuff that he, he put away back in the eighties, hasn't looked at since. We pulled it out, cleaned out the, the rat's nest literal and cleaned out the insect uh, uh, carcasses and cleaned it out. Dusted it out, cleaned it up, plugged it in, turned it on, it sounded just as good as it did back in the 70s when he put it away. Not a, not a bit different, not a click or pop in a channel. Everything worked. I was completely amazed. He, pick, he, he picked himself up about a $2,000 uh, amp and speaker system there by going to do a little dusting work. It was like, <laughs> what's, what's the, where's the, why, do, why, you know, anyway, that's a good story. Yeah, say say again what the DAC stands for. It's a digital uh, analog, analog converter. 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 Digital analog yeah. converter. Your CD player has a digital to analog converter on the board inside the CD player. Your DVD player has a digital analog. This is a standard component that you can choose to get a better one outside the device. That's the only thing. And they the cost about a hundred bucks. Is that what you say? A, a, a decent one runs you runs you uh, eighty to hundred bucks to get get something. But that you get that, and then you have to spend another <clears throat> eighty to hundred bucks on the other things, right? Yeah, my my little kinter here was I think uh, thirty five forty bucks. Got uh, this is a this is a Guttenberg recommended minimal system. It's got a volume of ba uh, it, it's got treble and bass and uh, volume. Doesn't have a subwoofer out. The ones I get from my friends had to have subwoofer outs. You don't need it. I just got two, and these two Daytons with the linear, with the um, ribbon uh, tweeters uh, that Steve, if Steve Guttenberg, a, a reviewer for Stereophile Magazine, gives it a thumbs up, it's on my list now. You know, this guy has reviewed multi billion dollar gear that I would never be able to buy in the world. Right here, guys, on your handout. Uh, Steve is your man for all these systems. Okay. 
Okay, okay now we, we have to make sure everyone knows we're not trying to get them to run out and spend money, even though it sort of sounds like we are, we aren't. What I learned today is that almost every one of us figured out a, an inexpensive way to solve a problem or we solved it the way we really wanted to. Rex, you're a good example. You got everything in one by getting that smart TV and you know how to hook it up. It's working for you. Deborah Ann, you're, you're, yours is working for you. Your Roku is. And, and mine works for me. I think the main thing that what I feel is really beneficial is I didn't have a choice. I didn't know what my choices were when I did that. And so I didn't compare what I might want to do. But since they're constantly upgrading, and new things are possible, I think it's important to know where we can get that information if we want it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I think Harry makes a point, you know, we, we, we may have gotten used to some pretty poor quality sound, and we don't have to, we can accept that or not accept that. But if we want to do something about it, it's important to know what kind of resources we could use to oh. find that out. Just, well. just, just as we've gotten used to those interfaces that bring us our smart, uh, bring us our Netflix and our YouTube on our DVD player and on our smart TVs. Yeah, That's where I, you know, we all first encountered those, those smart interfaces where we could watch Netflix. It was on our DVD player, it was on our, our smart TV. Well, yeah. they have improved those interfaces so much that, even if so if you don't like navigating it or you find it frustrating use it strictly for a dvd player and get a roku you're done it's so much simpler straightforward don't tolerate uh non-user friendly events in your life because within a turns of a head it, it, you'll find a user friendly one right away mm -hmm. and they're usually under 50 bucks yeah yeah, 50 yeah. Yeah. Ed, what were you going to say? Sorry, I cut you off, Ed. Oh, I, I nothing. Uh, don't, don't worry about it. <laughs> Whatever it was, it wasn't that important. Oh, hell yes, it was. <laughs> well, so we've got one more session, you guys, and, and we need to talk about what, what would be most helpful for that. I mean, one idea I have is that, you know, may, may, for some people, maybe this is the end of the rope. I mean, maybe they've learned what they want to learn. But if anyone wants to do any more research into the audio things and see what they find and then ask Harry questions, that's another option if, you, if you're interested in that. Um, I have a request for my wife who, okay. she would like to know, uh, what's, is there a good way to store passwords? Good because there's so, many, there's so many passwords good out question. there. Because I can't figure that out either. Yeah, because I mean, and I've been writing them down for years, and you know, I've got this very totally messy system of handwritten user. This is my, this is my password. <laughs> yeah, I know. So, is there a way? Is there a way to, you know, catalog your your user IDs and your passwords for these various accounts that we have? Is there is there an easy way to do that? Let's Maybe talk what about I do is I, I have made up this Excel spreadsheet and it has all of my passwords in it and I don't keep it on my computer. I keep it on a thumb drive and then <laughs> yours looks very familiar. And then when I want to update it, I put the thumb drive in, update it, print off a new one, shred the old one. Well, that's yeah. a good idea. That's a great idea. And then and then this these binders are like this one is Photoshop tips, oh. and the other one is business cards. But you yeah. know, my brother-in-law has one where you start you store them in the computer with only one master password, and he tried to get me going on that, and I just oh. never yeah. I did it. So I think we need to talk about that. Is that safe, or is it better to do what you're There's doing? There's an external what? box. I I've just begun to look into those. I, uh, and actually, do the same. So. Uh, Sorry, I got a I got a phone call. Yeah, mute, mute, you, mute yourself. yourself. Good. Oh, there you go. But yeah, there's a little there's a little device looks like a calculator. You can put your passwords in. I have never uh, jumped for one. I've seen them. I've I've done a I'll watch a YouTube video every now and then. Then I kind of forget about it. And I use my little piece of paper that I made years ago. A word I used a word document with columns in it. Same kind of thing. I never updated it physically. I or uh, I never updated it in the computer, 
uh, I just updated it in the uh, on the paper. So the paper's full of new passwords and everything. So it's, but yours is better. I want your, uh, I'd like your template for that. That would be a good. Uh, yeah, well, there's no template. You just go to Excel and I have websites, my username, passwords, and then other information for that. You know, what was your first pet's name, your mother's maiden name kind of stuff. Yeah. Now, and, and then, you know, I just, I just, you know, as I get new ones, I add it in. This is just all keep that alphabetical. And as you add ones or you have to change your passwords, you can do it. And then, like I say, I just store it on the thumb drive rather than on my desktop so that if somebody breaks into my computer, somebody breaks into my house, I mean, I don't keep, I do not keep the password for my bank account on there. But that's, you know, that's the only one I keep in my head. Well, I think no, that's great. That something that Mike Mullen, who did the scams workshop, told me was that you can put, you can password protect uh, an Excel document and a Word document. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. That's another thing you can do. You can use Excel and Word, but you can password protect it if you're leaving it on your, or mm -hmm. if you wanted to send it to your kids. Oh. Theoretically, yeah. you could send it to them, but password protect it. Oh, see, yeah. I don't know how to do that. That would be good to learn. Yeah, I a lot of workplaces that. do that too. It offers yeah. to whenever I tr whenever I save one of these documents that I create, it offers to uh, password encode it. To, when I make it to a PDF, anyway, I know that. And I'm, yeah. of course, oh, yeah. I never click that. I don't want to have people take that extra step. But that there, it. it's very okay. easy to do do it to password protect it. I, I mean, I I I looked at it and I saw right away how to do it. But but, but we can talk about that next time. The I think problem is if it's if it's password protected and it's on my computer, then when I want to find this the when I need a password, I have to write it down so I can use it. Yeah, it always comes back to paper for me too. I can, yeah. you know, uh, but there are little calculator things that you can yeah. get. I, I haven't investigated it thoroughly. I'll put a little homework on that, come up with something next week. Thank okay, you. Well, so, Debran, tell me the, I mean, I guess I, you you keep your USB, uh, I mean, your, your thumb drive on your keychain, right? I have, I have the one I have on my keychain has my, um, DNR and you know my pulse and stuff like that on it. Yeah. That's so the one I keep on. What happens if you lose it? I mean, or is well, it shit happens, but I've never lost my keychain. No, but I, 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 not, I mean, your huh? one with your passwords. Where do you keep that? I mean, I mean, it's, it's up here next to my desk. Okay, so you it's just and a... and it it says private on it. It doesn't say what's on it. Uh huh. So. so You'd have to remember to take it with you if in an emergency, for example. Screw my passwords. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I mean to me, separating it from you know that that's every time okay. I travel, I take this funky book with me because that's got my. I mean, increasingly, honestly, I'm putting my passwords on my phone in notes, but they're not protected. <laughs> And I'm not so sure that's a good idea, but I don't think oh. most people give a hoot what my passwords for most things are, like Costco and everything else. I only worry about my bank password, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, the, and that one I have. The rest of them, you know, my Amazon password, truly, you know, I could, if we're having a disaster, I probably could figure out how to reset it if I needed it. Exactly. Um, you know, um, I could probably grab this book faster, but... Yeah, that's a good thing to remember, to make a list of things to remember to take with you. And this might be a good one. But you know, it's great as we're getting older. I don't write down my bank password because I think I can remember it, right? <laughs> well, mine is, mine is something logical that probably any half-assed computer could probably, you know, churn out eventually. I'm just hoping they don't. Erda, what's the date of our next meeting? Our next meeting um, is in two two weeks. May. It is May. Let's see. Da, da, da. Um, the four? Is it the May four? Let's see. We are June. We are. Yes, it is May fourth. That's our last meeting. May fourth. Okay. So let's just tie up loose ends. What do you say? And yeah. if okay. anyone wants to do any research, does anyone have any requests for the last session? I mean. 
So I've learned a lot from these and uh, you know, I don't think we're solving huge problems, but I think we're raising important issues. I think we're trying to find resources and you know, um, Chrissy, you sent out the, you didn't send out the resource page. You sent out the questions. Oh, which I don't think we need anymore, but we need the resource page and maybe iCloud. I don't think you were here when we did iCloud, Deborah Ann, but there's an iCloud handout. We figured out how to find our stuff on iCloud, which was fun. Because I knew it was on iCloud. I just didn't know how to find it. So, right. Yeah. And I found out that, you know, Gmail, um, only, only iCloud mail is on iCloud, but Gmail is on the Gmail cloud site. Okay. If you ever needed to research your, if you ever needed to find your old Gmails, you had to go to the Gmail cloud. Okay. Find it through I your just own. delete mine when I'm done with them. So I probably don't have anything. Good, I, I keep mine. Yes, <laughs> I know you keep <laughs> yours. Yeah, that's good. I have a few files of, of things that I archive, but very little. Uh -huh, that's good. That's yeah. good. Now with those ones I archive, are those on a cloud? If they're yeah. Gmails, they are. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So Every, why wouldn't I be able to find them by just clicking on them on my computer? You could, but if something happened to your computer and you wanted to access them, you could go to your Gmail account on Google and look for them there and they might be there. Yeah, make yourself a bookmark for those, those uh, places where you can access your mail and your other accounts online and uh, you'll... Uh, but make, a, make sure that's part of your traveling list of, of, of things. So if you're, you know, if you're on the other side of the world and you want to check in on your bank, you can do it online. You can check in on your email on, on the website. There's always a website. If you have an email account, there's a website. I don't care what it is, Gmail, Charter. You know, we don't all use our, uh, the app on our computer anyway. A lot of people use the browser to access their mail all the time. So they don't know what we're talking about when we say your client, uh, they don't use it. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure that I'm not lost just listening to you right now. <laughs> well, you know, my problem with my bank is that uh, my, my computer automatically knows the first thing and then I put in the second thing. And so I don't know what that first thing is anymore. <laughs> probably your password your username your username yeah, probably your I don't know what they think my username is it's probably your your email account but it might not be yeah, it's something else well, that's why on my list i do write down all my usernames too <laughs> good well uh Deborah, what what he was talking about is on my computer i have a mail app and that's how i get my email through that mail app but i could go directly to my browser either Safari or Chrome, and I could get, I could access my my email via the browser. I don't oh, know. Okay. Through the app on my computer. And and okay. you could do that from. She could do that from my computer, for example. I could do that when I was visiting Betty Ann. I could do that all. Oh, the time. okay. Yeah. I yeah. recommend you. I recommend you all familiarize yourself with that, okay. to know that you, to, so you have your back door to your account. Yeah, that, that if something happened to your computer and you couldn't do it that way or, and you needed to access your mail through somebody else's computer because yeah. your house burned down and you didn't get yeah. get that laptop was too heavy to get out. I mean, your desktop was too heavy to get out. You lost that, but you could access your emails, the ones that you'd saved. And you could um, access all the other things that are in the cloud. Okay, so wouldn't you just go to somebody else's computer and go on Chrome and go to Gmail and right. put your password in? That's back. the back door. That's the back door. That's the back door. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. okay. I got it. You're on it. I got it. Yeah. It's just language. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we've been working on. We don't have common language to talk about things. So we've been trying to develop it. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. All right. Well, two weeks from now, we will see you all. And if, if someone thinks of something they want us to cover, just shoot us a message and we will do it. Okay, great. Yeah. All right, sounds good.